Every object that we see has a specific character which differentiates one thing from another. And we recognize an object by seeing its color, shape and size. What happens with the size, shape and color of an object we know changes? What will happen when the tree starts having leaves blue in color and the sky starts turning green? That's when we get scared and this phenomenon will be the talk of the town. Actually, we are living in that day of change. It is being talked about in newspapers, TV channels and the internet. On September 28, 2015, the moon that we see will turn blood in color. Is it called a blood moon? Why didn't they say a red moon? Why use the word blood? Now the word blood is found in the scripture, a blood moon. In the last 400 years, three times the tetrad has appeared on Jewish feast days. Not only a tetrad, but also a solar eclipse that's what is amazing you know the scripture says the sun shall be darkened the moon will turn into blood so there is a solar eclipse and a blood moon two things must go together if it is just a solar eclipse no blood moon doesn't make any significance if it's just a blood moon and no solar eclipse doesn't make any significance because in the past 2000 years there were many solar eclipses and there were many four blood moons but they never fell on Jewish feast days except three only these three coupled with a solar eclipse has fallen on Jewish feast days in the last 400 years a tetrad is a series of four consecutive lunar eclipses with six full moons in between and no intervening partial lunar eclipses. The recent tetrad began with the April 2014 lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes directly behind the earth into its shadow. This can occur only when the sun, the earth and the moon are aligned exactly with the earth in the middle. The lunar eclipse that is coming on September 28, 2015 won't be just another lunar eclipse, but in this eclipse the moon will be blood in color. Now please keep in mind something, okay? I want you to remember two things. Solar eclipse, sun is darkened. Something that is dark doesn't give light, it's not a good omen. It's a bad sign. Number two, blood moon. You see the word blood. Blood means shedding of blood. So please keep these two in your mind. And now I will trace you the history. Over a period of 5,000 years, from 1999 BC to 83,000, there will be a total of 3,479 total lunar eclipses. Among the 3,479 eclipses, there will be only 142 tetrads. There were 62 tetrads over the last 2,000 years. The blood moon tetrad has landed on the biblical feast days only 8 times in the last 2,000 years. Let us go back and find out what repercussions the last three tetrads that fell on Jewish feast days had on the Jews. 1492, Jewish Expulsion. 
the tetra that fell on 1492 had various repercussions on the Jewish community, more specifically on the Jews living in Spain. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel of Spain seized the wealth of the Jews and expelled them from Spain. Christopher Columbus, a secret Jew, held the expelled Jews to go to a place safer for greater security and economic opportunities. And thus, he ended up discovering America. More than 13,000 Jews were put on trial and killed during the first 12 years of the Spanish Inquisition. The next tetrad occurs 400 years later in 1948. In 1948, the modern state of Israel was born. On the day the British mandate over Palestine expired, that is Friday, May 14, 1948, the Jewish People's Council gathered at the Tel Aviv Museum to declare the establishment of the State of Israel. David Ben-Gurion began reading the declaration he had written. Four hours later, Egypt bombed Tel Aviv and the War of Independence broke out. A combined invasion by Egypt, Jordan and Syria together with expeditionary forces from Iraq entered Israel. The invading forces took control of the Arab areas and immediately attacked Israeli forces and several Jewish settlements. This war extended to a period of over 10 months. In this war, approximately 6,373 Israelis were killed. In 1967, Israel won the Six-Day War and recaptured Jerusalem. The Six-Day War was fought between June 5 and June 10, 1967 by Israel and the neighboring states of Egypt, Jordan and Syria. In that war, Israel captured the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, Golan Heights from Syria. In this war, approximately 1,000 Israelis were killed and 4,517 were wounded and 15 were captured. 400 tanks were destroyed and 46 aircraft were as well destroyed. So, in these last three tetrads, one can undoubtedly come to a conclusion that a tetrad falling on Jewish feast days unfortunately means bloodshed and a bad omen for the Jewish people and for the nation of Israel. Now, all these three times, there was a lot of shedding of blood. Now, history tells us that. Now, this one is the fourth blood moon. On April 15, 2014, the day of Passover, there was a total lunar eclipse. It was the first of four consecutive total eclipses in a series known as the Tetrad. The second one took place on October 8, 2014, during the Feast of Tabernacles. In between the four blood moons, a solar eclipse occurred on March 20, 2015. Then the third blood moon occurred on April 4, 2015, on the day of Passover. Now the last one will take place on September 28, 2015, on the Feast Day of Tabernacles. The consequences the first blood moon, which appeared on April 15, 2014, had on the nation of Israel, were catastrophic. The Israel-Gaza conflict, which broke out on 8 July 2014, brought upon the nation of Israel great loss both materially and to the vast death of the Jewish community. Israeli tanks are positioned outside the entrances to Gaza, awaiting orders to invade as the aerial bombardments from both sides continues, but claiming an uneven toll of dead and injured. There are rumors of wars, rumors of third intifada, and efforts to divide Israel and Jerusalem into two. One can only imagine what will happen to Israel when the final blood moon comes to pass.
science tells us the next blood moon where four tetrad will appear together with the solar eclipse will not be for the next 100 years and the bible that we just read it says the sun will be darkened the moon will turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now, keep this in mind. The next blood moon will be 100 years later. So which means 2014, the next one, you add 100 years, is how many? 2114. Now keep that number in mind. Prophet Neville Johnson, a wonderful man of God, whom God has raised in Australia. Now God revealed to him that the next jubilee that Israel will celebrate will be her last jubilee. Now this was several years ago. So he asked the Lord, when will that jubilee be? So the Lord told him the jubilee, a jubilee is 50 years. So the jubilee will be in 2017. What is so special in 2017 in relationship to Israel's Jubilee? That is the year Israel will celebrate the golden Jubilee of the reunification of East and West Jerusalem. So that's going to be very very important in the history of Israel. Now if 2017 is the year of a Jubilee, when will be the next Jubilee? 2067, right? Okay. Now, keep this number in your mind, 2067. When is the next blood moon? 2114. Okay, the next blood moon is 2114. And the next Jubilee is 2067. The Lord Jesus said, Israel will not celebrate her next jubilee because I will come before that. So which means there won't be the next blood moon. If there won't be another blood moon, then this prophecy in Joel 2 is very very specific for this time, this season. Which means, the sun will be darkened, the moon will turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And that great and terrible day of the Lord is the end time persecution and tribulation. With persecution and with tribulation, there comes the shedding of blood. Now you look at the past, very easy to look at the past. Okay, 1492, 1493, blood moon appeared. This is what happened in history. Good. 48, 49, blood moon appeared. This is what in, happened in history. Good. 67, 68, blood moon appeared. This is what happened in history. Okay, good. Now, 2014, 2015, blood moon. What's going to happen? When I was in the Philippines in the month of March, I took it up before the Lord in prayer. I said, Lord, you must teach me what is the significance of the blood moon. The final blood moon for this season before the Lord comes is on September the 28th. Okay, when this blood moon appears, what is it speaking to us? What is going to happen? What is the sign? that will take place three things are going to take place one blood is going to be shed in Israel that's number one Israel is going to be divided blood is going to be shed they're going to fight over the land but 
eventually it will be divided into two. Secondly, a shaking is going to come in Europe. Thirdly, the church will go through a transition, a transformation. Another significant event is underway to take place in the month of September 2015. I read a scripture and I tried to just look deep into what the scripture was saying. And I saw a vision of that scripture. You know, the temple of God in heaven. As I was looking at that, that vision faded and another vision came on top of this first vision I saw. The second vision I saw was, I saw the head of a dragon. But very, very strangely, the head of a dragon looked so benign, so calm, so kind like the head of a lamb. Dragons have very fierce looking eyes, but these eyes look so kind, so calm. It's like two face superimposed in one. But it's not superimposed, you know. When you superimpose one on top of another, you can see the original and the picture that's superimposed. In visions, sometimes it's amazing. When you look at one, you can see two. But the two is not two, it is one. So when I saw this lamb, it was a lamb but also a dragon and I saw the skin the skin was hot scaly like a dragon dark red in color with little shades of black very very dark not bright red very dark red and as I was looking I saw two horns like horns of a lamb on the head of the dragon and I looked at his mouth, it was chewing something. And it was chewing as if, like how lamb or goats would chew something, you know, just like that. And I noticed what it was chewing. It was not chewing grass. It was chewing shredded paper. You know, when you put a paper into a shredding machine, it comes with strips of paper, right? It was like that, it was in his mouth and it was just chewing. And I just looked at this vision for a long, long time to get all the details so that I don't forget anything. Then after that, the vision disappeared. And I was wondering what this was all about. And I thought, oh, this is what? Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 says, And I saw a beast rise up from the seas among the people and it had two horns like a lamb and his mouth talked like a great dragon so I thought oh this is the vision that I'm seeing from 8 o'clock in the morning right up to 12 o'clock in the noon I was stirred continuously and what Brother Neville Johnson preached last night keep on flooding into my mind. You know, towards the last part of his message, he shared about the Pope visiting the U.S. So that kept on flooding into my mind. So I was wondering, why is this thing keep on coming into my mind? So I thought perhaps I must get the details from him. But the word keep on coming to me, go on the internet and check the details. So, as I sat before my computer to check that, then suddenly oh, an incident that happened last year came to my remembrance. Asteroid named Beast On June 8, 2014, the Asteroid 2014 HQ124 nicknamed the Beast which was in the size of a football stadium whizzed nearing the Earth. 
This asteroid was of irregular surface and measured nearly 370 meters, that is 1,200 feet in size. This was discovered on April 23rd by NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, a sky mapping space telescope. The beast traveled at 31,000 miles per hour, which is 17 times faster than a shot from a high-speed rifle. A new asteroid with the nickname The Beast will be flying by Earth this weekend, and it's cutting it pretty close. According to Space.com, this new asteroid was discovered on April 23, 2014. It's more than a little disconcerting that an asteroid of this size that could do some pretty devastating damage on Earth was only discovered two months ago. The asteroid's official name is 2014 HQ-124, but we think calling it The Beast is much more appropriate. The beast flew past us on the 8th of June 2014 at a distance of 776,000 miles. This is only 3.25 times the distance from Earth to Moon. HQ-124 is at least 10 times bigger and possibly 20 times than the asteroid that injured a thousand people last year in Shelyabinsk, Siberia. June 8, 2014, the day the beast passed by Earth, is the same day Pope Francis makes historic Islamic prayer, Israel-Palestine peace prayer in Vatican, along with Israel President Shimon Peres and Palestine President Mohammed Abbas. Revelation chapter 17 verse 17 For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. Why on that particular day, this asteroid, see NASA could have named it any other names, of all the names in the world, See, the Bible tells us, like what Brother Neville said last night, the heavens declare the glory of God. And day after day, they are uttering their speech. And the Bible tells us in Genesis 1.14, that the sun, the moon and the stars are created for signs. Or the Hebrew word for signs says, signal. They are sending out a signal. They are speaking something. So what is this speaking? This is the beast. Is it? So my next question is, is Pope Francis the prophesied false prophet? Pope Francis was born on December 17, 1936 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. His original name was Jorge Mario Bergoglio. He's the child of Italian immigrants to Argentina. He's the first Latin American pontiff, the first non-European for nearly 1,300 years. Pope Francis is the first Jesuit Pope. He's also the first Pope to be called as Pope Francis. He chose Francis as his name in honor of Saint Francis of Assisi, Saint of Italy, which is Pope Francis' native country. He became the first Pope in 600 years to be appointed as 266th Pope when the previous Pope was alive. On February 11, 2013, Pope Benedict XVI resigned the papacy. He did so after he claimed that God asked him to do so. Hours after Pope's shock resignation, a lightning struck the roof of St. Peter's Basilica. March 4, 2013 I attended a broadcast conference in Nashville, Tennessee in the US. It was during those days, but on particularly on March the 4th, I was sitting at a lecture and there was this Christian broadcaster speaking something about broadcasting. And as I was listening to him, the word of the Lord came unto me concerning 
the next pope that will be chosen. Now the next pope was elected on March the 13, 2013. But the word that came unto me was on March the 4th, which was nine days before the new pope was to be elected. The word of the Lord came unto me concerning the next pope that was going to come. They said the next pope will be a younger person compared to all his predecessors, have good rapport with world leaders, will be knowledgeable on world affairs, very friendly and approachable person to all. Now in the last two years, this present pope has passed all what his predecessors have done in his grubs of world affairs and his rapport with world leaders and a very, very pleasant, friendly, smiling nature. Just one year after being Pope, Pope Francis became the number one leader in the Fortune magazine's 50 greatest leaders for the year 2014. In December, Pope Francis was featured as the Time Magazine's Person of the Year in its 2013 edition. The article in Time stated, Pope Francis, the people's Pope, he took the name of a humble saint and then called for a church of healing. On February 13, 2014, Pope Francis was in the cover page of the American pop culture magazine, Rolling Stone. Vanity Fair Italia also named him Man of the Year. The cover story on Pope Francis noted, his first 100 days have already placed him in the category of world leaders who make history, but the revolution continues. The New Yorker also put him on the cover following his nomination as Times Person of the Year. According to the 14th Annual Survey from the Global Language Monitor in 2013, Pope Francis became the most talked about person on the planet. At the same time, world leaders and religious heads were impressed and appreciated Pope Francis. President Obama said that Pope Francis makes us want to be better people. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon praises Pope Francis as a man of peace and purpose. Dr. Nicholas Nieder, the head of the Council of the Evangelical Church in Germany, has called him hopeful. American pastor James Robinson had said that he believed that the prayers of earnest Christians had helped lead to the choice of Pope Francis. American Cardinal Dolan said that Pope Francis is a Christmas gift for the whole world. Head of the Eastern Orthodox Church, Patriot Bartholomew, one lauded the humble manner in which Pope Francis exercises his ministry. Patriarch said to Francis that he preached with words but above all with love. Pope Francis asks, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? Supporting his statement, Elton John said that Pope Francis should be canonized for reaching out to gay people. Pope Francis has notably taken a more liberal stance on homosexuality, divorce and other issues that have been staunchly condemned by his predecessors. When the Synod of Bishops on the Family 2014 ended with the position of gay marriage and acceptance of gays to the church, Pope Francis wanted senior church leaders to look into the issue and to scrutinize the reasons why many countries have legalized same-sex marriages. Due to this, gay Catholics in U.S. are feeling very close to Pope Francis. On August 28, 2015, Pope Francis had sent his blessings to a lesbian author of children's book, Jean Has Two Mummies, wishing her and her wife well in their work. On September 8, 2015, Pope Francis made the latest reform by making divorce cheaper and easier for Catholics to remarry. The Pope is making another historic move today. He's making it easier for Catholics to have their marriages annulled. Now previously, Catholics seeking an annulment needed approval from at least two church tribunals. Now the Pope will allow bishops to grant them directly if both spouses request it. U.S. and Cuba have been at loggerheads for more than 50 years. And the Pope 
had brokered a deal between President Barack Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro that resulted in renewed relationships between the two countries. This peace treaty between the two countries was not brokered by a politician. It was brokered by the Pope himself and the Secretary of State of the Vatican he said this concerning the Pope the Holy See diplomacy is always there to help to build bridges so that is his nature he is someone who has worked on promoting conglomeration of other faiths and religions Pope Francis portrays himself to be a good initiator of peace and has one having great interest in uniting Christian denominations, uniting all religions and also aiming at the unity of all people and culture. In 2013, Pope Francis became the first Catholic leader to call for a sincere and rigorous interbelief dialogue with atheists. During his installation mass, Pope Francis addressed the ambassadors from the 180 countries, including Muslim leaders, promoting interreligious dialogue, particularly with Islam. On August 13, 2013, during the Sunday Mass, Pope Francis called on Muslims and Christians to work together. During his Israel visit in May 24 to 26, 2014, Pope Francis concluded his tour by meeting with Patriarch Bartholomew I to continue interfaith dialogue with the Orthodox Church. During his visit to Albania on September 21, 2014, he met with religious leaders including those of the Muslim, Orthodox, Bektashi, Jewish and Protestant faiths. During his visit to Turkey on November 28-30, 2014, Francis visited the Blue Mosque where he prayed silently alongside senior Islamic clerics. Francis concluded his visit with the liturgy in the Church of St. George alongside Bartholomew I, asking for his blessing for himself and for the Church of Rome. He also urged the reunification between the two churches. During his visit to Sri Lanka on January 13-15, 2015, the Pope participated in an inter-religious meeting marked by a Buddhist chant and blessings by Hindu and Muslim clerics. And in June 27, 2014, evangelical Christian leaders met the Pope in Rome. Who are the evangelical Christian leaders? Reverend James Robinson. Kenneth Copeland, Reverend Geoff Tunicliffe, Reverend Brian Stilla, Reverend Thomas Shermeka, and Reverend John Arnott. They all met with the Pope and they had an audience with him to talk about a peace alliance between the Protestants and the Catholics. I just felt very honored and very humbled. On June 5, 2014, Joel Osteen, senior pastor at America's fastest growing mega church, Houston's Lakewood Church, met with Pope Francis at the Vatican. Osteen said it was a great honor to represent the pastors of America. Pastor Rick Warren, founder and pastor of California's well-known Saddleback Mega Church and author of best-selling books including The Purpose Driven Life, has called on non-Catholic Christians to join with Pope Francis and the Catholic Church in pursuit of their common goals. The, the main thing is love always reaches people. It, authenticity, humility, Pope Francis is the perfect example of this. He is, a, he is doing everything right. You see, people will listen to what we say if they like what they see. And as, as our new Pope, he was very, very symbolic. Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio's decision to choose the name of Francis as Pope has profound significance to Muslims regarding Muslim-Christian relations. In 1219, 
Saint Francis of Assisi left the camp of the Fifth Crusaders besieging the walled Egyptian city of Demeta and crossed enemy lines to meet with Malik al Kamil, the young Sultan of Egypt, to convert him instead of fighting. Some weeks later, both became friendly and parted with better understanding. Therefore, when this pope was named after St. Francis of Assisi, the Muslim population looked forward for the same relationship between Christians and Muslims as it was in the days of St. Francis of Assisi. In the same way, when Pope Francis was appointed as pontiff, he said, It is not possible to build bridges between people while forgetting God, he said. The Pope continued saying that the converse is also true and it is not possible to establish true links with God while ignoring other people. He further said that it is important to intensify dialogue among the various religions, particularly of dialogue with Islam. When he was christened by the sign that appeared in the sky, the beast, at that moment, just like you know, a star appeared when baby Jesus was born. Likewise, this meteor appeared, a star appeared, signaling the birth of the false prophet. And he will be sympathetic to the Muslim nations and to Palestinians' right to self-rule in Israel and he will favor partition of Jerusalem. Now this word I received in 2013 and it was fulfilled exactly on June 26, 2015 when the Pope formally recognized Palestine as an independent state and signed a treaty between the Vatican and the Palestine establishing diplomatic relationships. Pope Francis is very much interested in making peace in Israel. Pope Francis made his three-day trip to Middle East from May 24 to May 26. All through his speeches, Pope talked about peace and peace alone. Pope Francis has spoken of the importance of peace at most of his public appearances, including at his welcome ceremony in Israel. It was commonly understood among the Jews and Muslims that Pope didn't take one side or the other. He took the side of peace and so we are. Pope emphasized on the formation and recognition of Palestine as well as recognition of Israel. Pope is in favor of dividing Israel into Jewish State of Israel and Islamic Republic of Palestine. Questo lo dove è nato il principe della pace? Desidero rivolgere un invito a lei, signor presidente Mahmoud Abbas e al signor presidente Simon Perez ad elevare insieme con me una intensa preghiera invocando da Dio il dono della pace. Offro la mia casa in Vaticano per ospitare questo incontro di preghiera. Both the leaders responded to this call by visiting Vatican. Rabbi Rasana Rusi, a member of the Israel Rabbinical Council and a judge on the Rabbinical Court, said that sometimes where the politicians fail, religion can succeed. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast and is not and yet is. Retired Israeli President Shimon Peres has proposed a new global peace initiative to Pope Francis, a United Nations of Religions. Peres said, what we need is an organization of United Religions as the best way to combat terrorists who kill in the name of faith. He later went on to say that Pope Francis must be the leader for this United Nations of Religions. The month of September 2015 is going to be a time to remember in the history of the world. In this month, the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, 
5776 falls on September 13, 2015. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, falls on September 23, 2015. On this very day, a page is turned in heaven. September 23, Pope Francis arrives at the White House to meet with Barack Obama. Some have suggested that the timing of this event is highly unusual. Now please take note of this. There are many, many great world leaders in the world. But the President of the United States, whoever it is, is always recognized as the great super leader of the whole free world. And the United States is always recognized as a great superpower, like a protector of all nations. So someone who comes and meets President of the US, it means you are someone of great importance. September 24, the Pope addresses a joint session of the US Congress. Pope Francis is said to become the first leader of the Catholic Church to address both chambers of Congress during his first trip to the United States on September 24, 2015. Now, when the Pope steps into the U.S. Congress, where all the senators, all the congressmen of the 50 states of the U.S. will be there, they are going to stand up and give him the standing ovation. U.S. is still regarded as the superpower nation of the whole world. And the United States President, whoever it may be, who comes in that office is regarded as the greatest leader on planet Earth. So if someone gets an audience with the President of the United States and stands in the Congress and address the Congress, so he is a highly, very, very highly important world leader. He gets instant recognition, instant authority, instant power, and instant open door to all the nations of the world. And his weight, his word, carries a lot of weight. Pope Francis would visit New York on September 25th to address world leaders at the General Assembly on its 70th anniversary. And when he stands there, all these world leaders from 200 odd nations will stand to give him a standing ovation, they will clap their hands and they will say, no one has spoken like he has spoken. And it is that time, power and authority will be given unto him. It is another christening. You know, the Bible tells us that the beast gave its power, the first beast gave its power to the second beast. So when that visit is made in the UN, the whole world, leaders, kings will be gathered there. And that will be a great recognition of second man to this false prophet who will rise up. Irish priest Saint Malachi who lived in the 12th century had a vision of all the popes who would reign after his time on a visit to Rome. Saint Malachi prophesied in 1139. The prophecy read thus, In the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church there will sit, that is as bishop, Peter the Roman, who will pastor a sheep in many tribulations, and when these things are finished, the city of seven hills, that is Rome, will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge his people. The end. When he had prophesied, there were already 156 popes who were in papacy. He prophesied about the remaining forthcoming 112 popes. According to his prophecy, Pope Francis is that final pope. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, 
Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. The seven heads are seven mountains on which that woman sits. And the woman whom you saw is that great city. Rome is the city of seven hills and according to Saint Malachi, this final pope will lead the church into many tribulations. The beast that we just saw is rising. He's going to come and sit on his throne to do that which it has been predestinated to do. Now you know what is going to happen next once he takes his throne? The next thing that will take place is he is going to introduce the Antichrist and you say this is the Messiah this is the Christ that we should all follow not only loving exhortation he says it will make the whole world to worship it will cause the word cause means force force to worship the second thing that will happen is a law will be passed that not to pray to any other God not to be associated with any other church except the authorized ecumenical one world church you cannot pray to any other God you cannot go to any other church you cannot do things like this. You cannot worship in your churches. All licenses cancel. Get out. You cannot renew your licenses. What are you going to do? Where are you going to meet? Back to the first century house church. Amen. Satan will give power to the beasts. To do signs and great wonders. When we say signs and wonders, we always think of miracles, healings, this and that. But what I was shown is this. The signs in the heavens. What signs in heaven? He will cause to appear images of Mary crying and hugging people. Will also cause Mary to appear in visions dreams, talking to people, prophesizing. Have you heard of such things taking place in the past? Yes. I'm sure you've heard sporadically it has taken place everywhere. But these will become very common in the last days. So much so, everybody will think that this is the one true living goddess. One God, because he's appearing everywhere, like a great mother with great love, hugging. You know, if you look at all the major religions of the world, all of them have a woman as the chief goddesses. In Hinduism, the chief among all the gods is a woman, a goddess called Kali. In the Chinese, it's Kuan Yin. Right? It's a woman. And then in Ephesians is Diana. In Europe is Diana. In all the religions you see, there's always a woman. And who's that real woman? Is none other than Astaroth. Astaroth, the queen of heaven. She is the one that will appear masquerading like all these other gods in all these various religions. And this Mary astronaut worship will spread all over the world let me tell you something about mother mary whenever i speak about her i always address her with great respect because she's a saint but not in the catholic sense of my belief you know i believe in the bible way of the sainthood what follows next is a huge company of false prophets will rise up in the last days and you will have a huge company of false teachers who 
will not only teach wrong doctrines but they will teach how the people can tap into the soulish spiritual realm to do astra travel in the spiritual realm and claim to have visitation with aliens and having visited different worlds and different star systems on May 13, 2014, during his homily, Pope Francis said that he would welcome alien life forms into the open arms of the Catholic Church. This is what he said. If tomorrow an expedition of aliens from Mars arrives, and one of the green ones with long nose and big ears, like those which children draw, comes and says, I want a baptism, what would happen? For years, Vatican astronomers are looking for extraterrestrials from their oldest astronomical research institutions in the world. And they are using two powerful telescopes. One is Vatican's own Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope and the telescope called Lucifer. Both are situated on Mount Graham in Arizona, USA. In recent years, the Vatican has really taken a position of leadership in the search for extraterrestrial life. On March 2014, the Vatican Observatory co-sponsored a major conference on extraterrestrial life that brought together 200 of the leading astrobiologists in the world. One of the organizers stated that one of the goals of the conference was to figure out how we can find life among the stars within the next two decades. The former head of the Vatican Observatory, Jose Gabriel Funes, an Argentine Jesuit priest and astronomer, does not believe that there is any conflict between his faith and the search for life beyond this world. He said, just as there is a multiplicity of creatures on earth, there can be other beings, even intelligent, created by God. He believes that the human race might be the lost sheep of the universe, and there could be other beings who remained in full friendship with their Creator. The current head of the Vatican Observatory guy, Consul Magno, the Jesuit priest and an American research astronomer, has publicly suggested that the aliens could actually be the saviors of humankind. So what would happen if aliens appear and say that they will guide the people of the earth and lead us into a new golden age? Will the Catholic Church accept it? Actually, they are expecting aliens to save the humankind. And Pope Francis has already opened the doors for the aliens. Even now, Pope Francis has an opinion that humans are destroying the earth. So, he is preparing a speech on climate change to address in the 70th UN General Assembly. The aliens that they are expecting are none other than the fallen angels. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Exodus there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself about all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The fallen angels are the ones whom God threw down from the highest place to the mid heavens. Apostle John saw in a vision that God showed him that in the last days there will be a war in heaven. Michael and his angels will fight against Lucifer and his angels. Michael will win the war and cast out Lucifer and his angels from the mid heavens to the earth. When Lucifer and the fallen angels are thrown to the earth, even now Vatican astronomers are looking for Lucifer through Lucifer telescope. During a homily in Rome, Pope Francis said that God redeems everyone, not just Christians, but atheists as well. So people can go to heaven by doing good, even if they don't believe in Lord Jesus. So we are at a threshold now, at a season of transition, blood moon, September 28th. The Feast of Tabernacles falls on September 28, 2015. The final blood moon also appears on September 28, 2015.
This final blood moon of this tetrad will be a super moon. The September 28, 2015 moon will be the closest to the Earth for the year, creating a super blood moon. The last three blood moons of this tetrad was not seen in Israel, but was seen in the US. The final blood moon of this tetrad, however, will be seen both in the US and Israel. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, we are in a season, a very important season, where all the end time revelations or prophecies spoken of in the Bible are going to come to pass. living in the end times in the last days your eyes are going to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ all these events including the appearing of the four black moons the commencement of the 70th UN General Assembly Pope Francis has visited the US and his efforts and agenda he is planning to enact on his visit to the US the proposed unity of religions and the efforts to divide Israel and Jerusalem falling on the Jewish feast days shows without a shadow of doubt that we are living in the last days The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered.